Welcome back to a new video about LC leather filter design. This is our example number one of the Bessel response. And we will design this circuit, which will be a fifth order low pass filter. Of course, we will work out our calculations for this step, step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our problem. We have an objective. We need to design a Bessel response passive LC leather low pass filter. It must have 50 ohm double terminated shunt input. Now, what does it mean? Actually, what we want to design is this part, which is the green box, which is a generalized filter. It must be a low pass filter of the LC ladder configuration. And the RS and the RL, which are here normalized to 1 ohm, must be scaled up to 50 ohm. And in addition, we need to have these specifications for our final design. The maximum pass band ripple must be 1.5 dB, which is a, a max. The minimum stop and attenuation must be 25 dB and the pass band frequency is 1 MHz and the stop band frequency is 4 MHz. So we need to use this data in order to calculate also the required component values. So the solutions step by step. First step one is the st pass band normalizing normalization coefficient CP. So that is uh, determined from the given a max so for a given maximum pass band ripple a max we can then relate this to the cp which is our pass band normalization coefficient that cp and the range of this uh, coefficient lies between 0 and 1 which is actually equivalent to the pass band ripple between the 0 db and the 3.0103 uh, db and that means the A max can be range uh, can be between 0 dB and uh, approximately 3.01 dB, which translates again between 0 and 1. So then we need to use a table which will then list this coefficient, which is the passband normalization coefficient, for several passband ripples and for the filter orders. That's shown here actually. You can see that here in this A max column which is R1.5, you can see that here. That is related to this value, which is then 0 0.71680. That means the filter order is then between 2 and 10. Still, of course, not specified which what the order is of our, uh, of our filter, but we, knew, we know that it is between 2 and 10. So we need more data that is actually also from a minimum and also what we need to use is the say CP. So a max of 1.5 dB translates to a CP which is our pass band normalization coefficient of 0 0.7168. Okay next step is the transition sharpness which is given by omega r and that is the ratio between the stop band frequency and the pass band frequency it is given in here in radians per second but you can of course relate it to fs and fp in this format so that is actually 4 megahertz over 1 megahertz which is just 4. then step 3 is we need to normalize this transition sharpness and we give it by a prime so omega r prime and that is just this value what we have found in step 2 multiplied by the cp that's the reason for the cp so omega r times cp will be then omega r prime so 4 times is 0 0.7168 that will give us 2.8672 and this is an important number we'll use shortly step 4 is the filter order now the actual business is coming because we know it is between second order and tenth order still not very clear what it is and now that it will be determined from the in the in step four which is using this table now you see in this table this is the omega r prime between one and ten which is our normalized value and here you see the stop pen attenuation in the vertical axis and here you see the first order second order third order four etc the lines here so there must be a intersection between our 2.8672 and the 25 dB we wanted for our maximum minimum stop and attenuation. And that intersection here is shown here. It is actually here. So if I now zoom in a little bit and then move on to this a little bit closer, you can see again this is the stop and attenuation. This is the normalized the, the transition sharpness. 
you can see this approximate 2.8672 and this is now 25 and this is the intersection and you see this line here which is actually our fifth order so we need a fifth order bezel response filter okay going back to the norm to the normal uh, discussion again so we need to have a fifth order filter so from the table we require ns5 for omega r prime of 2.8672 Okay, then we continue with our step five, which is the frequency scaling factor KF. And that is determined by looking at our pass per frequency and you divide this by the pass per normalization coefficient, which is CP. And if you do that, and remember that it must be, of course, two pi times this one megahertz, and you get now 8.766 mega radians per second. This is approximately 1.4 megahertz, and this will be also our cutoff frequency for our filter, but it will be then uh, determined later in the simulations. Step six is the scaled component values. So we get now closer to the actual circuit, and this is the circuit we can use for our uh, normalized uh, and prototype low pass filter. You see the RS also here and RL, and in between, which is this green part, actually what you see here, is the C1, L2, C3, L4, and C5. So this, this is just the numbering of the components. We have now five components here. We have three capacitors and two inductors. So we just need to determine that. But there is a table for the Bessel response, LC ladder, low pass filter configuration, where you have normalized element values. And the C1 here is now X1, and that is actually shown here, so fifth order. So normalized value of this C1 is 0 0.1743 farads. And then the next one is X2, which is L2. And the value of this inductor is 0 0.5072 henrys. This C3, which is actually just X3, which is 0 0.8040 farads. So all normalized values. Of course, not really practical. So we need to go to the practical values. So we need to scale it up. To our actual specifications so that is our next step so bring all the values here this is the k of which is determined this is the filter order this is the table and this is our prototype low pass filter this km by the way is 50 because we scale up from 1 ohm normalized value to 50 ohm because that's the objective here in this example so we need to move on from this to the scaled values are given here in primes that means it is scaled up so RS prime is 50 times this RS, which is one. Also RL prime, etc. So how do we calculate now all these components here? The formulas are shown here. So the C1 prime is equal to C1 divided by the magnitude and the frequency scaling factor. Now we know them because it's all here. And we also know the C1 here, which is from a table. So you just calculate that. So you get now here 397.7 picofarads. In a similar form, you can now calculate the L2 prime using the magnitude and the frequency scaling factor times L2, which is here, the normalized value. You get now 2.893 microhenries. So you go one by one. So for each coefficient, you see now the C3 prime, L4 prime, and also the C5 prime. So you have now all the component values and also the RS prime and also the rl prime so there are 50 ohm because 50 times one so we have now all five component values so five for this filter and also rs and rl so that means the design circuit will be done this so again this is our prototype low pass filter circuit and this is you can see that actually here's zero point or it's actually 174.3 millifarads which is just this so you see the number here which is this this number is this number and this number is here so you can actually see this one by one one on one on and this all scaled up to this circuit which is our final circuit which must be the fifth order battle response scaled low pass filter so we need to also check the values and also the simulation results so this is the body plot just magnitude you can see here some labels so let's go one by one and this is our circuit so First one is the pass band gain, which is here minus 6.02 dB approximately. Why? Because the gain at DC is 0 0.5 because you have one ohm and one ohm or actually 50 ohm and 50 ohm. So you get an attenuation of 
50 over 100 or 0 0.5 so that's also correct now the gain is minus 7.5 to approximately db at 1 megahertz that's actually shown here uh, and how much do we go down? Now the baseline is minus 6.02 dB approximately. So you go down here by 1.5 dB. And this is exactly also what we want at maximum. So that's actually also correct. So again, our proof here for this label. Now the stop attenuation is going again from this baseline down at now 4 megahertz. You see it is minus uh, 32 point approximately 6 dB so you go down here and you can calculate this here also this 26.5663 dB at 4 megahertz and that is more than the minimum required 25 dB so that's also according to specifications now the final one is the cutoff frequency which was not a specification but we have actually also this labeled here that's actually shown is approximately 1.3951 megahertz and why is this correct? You already said that in the discussion of the calculations that omega, the F, uh, KF, I mean, the frequency scaling factors actually are cutoff frequency in radians per second. And if you now convert this 8.766 mega radians per second to megahertz, you just divide by 2 pi, and that is actually what you also see here. So that is also verified. So all the specifications are met. In addition, we have also shown how to calculate the cutoff frequency here for this low pass filler design using the LC ladder configuration for this bezel response. So everything is checked. All right, guys, this is our example number one about the bezel response using the LC ladder filter configuration for our low pass filter. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. In the playlist of this LC ladder filter configuration, you can also see other videos about Butterworth response, Chevy Chev, and also inverse Chevy Chev response. So stay tuned and see you next time in another video.